Senator Sessions, House GOP is on the verge of breaking 2014 campaign promises. She joined us for an hour about a month ago. She's only got to the bottom of the hour today. Phyllis Schlafly, constitutional lawyer, best-selling author, founder of the eagleforum.org. She's got her uh, original book uh, out as a new book, A Choice and Not an Echo. And she is the proto Tea Party founder, is what I would call her. Uh, I would call somebody like Ron Paul the you know the supercharger of the libertarian Republican crossover, uh, but uh, she's definitely the great the uh, great lady of the true conservative movement. And if it wasn't for people like her, we'd be in even worse trouble with these rhinos and neocons today. Phyllis, uh, obviously, I want to get into your book and some of the inside baseball that breaks down, but. How big a deal is this? I mean, this really is the end of the republic, the end of Congress. There's been a lot of signposts on this road to perdition, but I don't think I have strong enough words for the constitutional crisis we're in, where on guns, UN treaties, our military, our power plants, uh, our borders, uh, why even have a Congress if the president is able to do this? This is unprecedented. Phyllis Schlafly, as a constitutional lawyer, where are we right now? Well, you're absolutely right in what you said, and there are several items that you pointed out that I haven't seen in any other news media. It's just an outrage, and it is the dust spell death of the, call it the country, uh, uh, Obama's uh, attempt to fundamentally transform us, as he promised when he uh, went into office, and uh, uh, I think it's outrageous, and I am absolutely disappointed with the members of Congress who are not taking the advice of Senator Sessions that you said and, and standing up and fighting and saying how really bad this is. Because uh, he's doing it for Democratic votes and he's doing it to uh, really break down the, the American uh, system the way it, it is and, and make us a different kind of country. And it's not like we're getting immigrants uh, from high-skilled areas. We're getting people that almost vote to a man for the most radical socialist communist agendas. Uh, what that's are all I, That's all I know. They come from a, a country where big government was everything. They don't know anything about our constitutional principles of limited government and, and balance of budget and... and uh, keep uh, spending down. They're not familiar with any arguments like that. And uh, so I, it, it's just an outrage, and I'm so disappointed in the uh, Republicans in Congress who are not standing up and, and yelling and screaming about what he's doing. Many historians have pointed out that uh, other great republics, empires, nations go the way of Rome. It follows the same pattern uh, we are going the way of Rome, bringing in the giant third world populations, and it seems to be an accelerated collapse of Rome timetable now. Uh, yes, you're absolutely right, and, and I think that's what Obama wants. He does not want America to be exceptional. He, he doesn't want us to be religious or Christian. Uh, he wants to absolutely change us so that we're no better than any other country. And uh, I think we are better. That's why everybody in the whole world wants to come here. Well, we certainly were exceptional by every metric. Inventions, trailblazing, profits, uh, growth, human rights. I mean, we were exceptional. Uh, now I think we're kind of a paradox of some exceptionalism, but also a lot of exceptional corruption, exceptional bizarro behavior. Uh, the Democrats especially get away with exceptional lying. What do you make, though, just a month after that historic election, almost to the day, It'll be to the day tomorrow, a month after that landslide, that serious message where even people like Bob Barr couldn't get elected because he was seen as establishment in Georgia. That's, that should be a message to Boehner and a message to McConnell, and we should see a revolt, and they should be removed from their positions of leadership. Uh, I mean, we need to see that happen, don't we, Phyllis? Well, we certainly do. Unfortunately, I don't see it happening because of certain collegiality that goes on in the House of Representatives. But uh, Tea Parties, we, and of course they've, uh, media have smeared the Tea Parties, who uh, are the big opposition to, to Boehner in the House. But it's so important that they rise up and, and that the American people, the grassroots, realize that the fight today is within the Republican Party.
Uh, and uh, that's why I wrote my book, A Choice, Not an Echo. It's the fight between the so-called establishment, the people we used to call the Rockefeller Republicans, and now we call them the rhinos or uh, establishment, uh, Republican in name only. Uh, but in any event, it's the money people who want to bring in the cheap labor, uh, who want to make us... Uh, uh, play on the global stage, and uh, Obama wants to be a, a globalist instead of an American. And uh, uh, we American people have just simply got to rise up, and, and the only one who's speaking real good sense on it is Senator Sessions. That's right. Rand Paul has said that it's clearly unconstitutional, but it's so clearly, separately from the immigration and, and North American Union aspects of this, We've never seen a president act this unilaterally. When Reagan and Bush Sr. did limited uh, legalizations or amnesties, uh, which I don't think were good to begin with, it was in line with Congress and laws they just passed, uh, not when they were at loggerheads and against the will of the American people and common sense. Uh, I just don't see how he gets away with this without a accelerated slide into dictatorship. And another thing that gives me a pain is when they cite Reagan as giving amnesty. Uh, yes, Reagan it wasn't perfect. He did make a mistake. He did give amnesty to a bunch of them. But he admitted it was a mistake. And we learned from it. Because they promised that that, that would end the illegals coming across the border. And, of course, it didn't. They, more and more came because they got a free pass into the U.S. And so we ought to learn from our mistakes. That's right, but but even though Reagan said it was a mistake, he 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 did. He was working with Congress, is my point. Yes, that's that's correct. And of course, Obama said he has a pen and a phone, and if Congress doesn't do what he wants, he's going to do it anyway. And then Congress doesn't respond to that, except for a lame lawsuit. And then Obama brags and says he changed the law. How could they, I guess he's really trying to break us. Well, I think he's trying to break our country. I really do. And, uh, in fact, he, he's almost said as much. He really meant it when he said he wanted to fundamentally transform us. And we like to think we're uh, the rule of law, uh, that we're a constitutional government, that we uh, stand by the Constitution. And uh, somehow uh, most of the congressmen are not. Now, now there's a, a group of the conservatives in the House a meeting this morning. Is this Wednesday? Yeah, they meet on Wednesday. And uh, I hope they're going to come out with uh, uh, some, uh, at least at least some talk about uh, how unconstitutional what Obama's doing. Uh, it's a conservative group that's led by Steve King, who's one of the few good guys in the House. And uh, I hope they, I hope we'll hear something, and I hope it'll be reported by the media. I want to skip this network break because we have limited time with Phyllis Schlafly, founder of Eagle Forum. You can go to eagleforum.org and valuable information and also find her column there and more on her new book, uh, which, again, is under the same name but a new book uh, on, uh, under the original classic name, A Choice, Not an Echo. When you talk about the the people trying to be gentlemanly in the House and wait their turn to move up the ranks of power, are we going to see our country completely broken and brought into global governance and the North American Union and a new voting bloc brought in to be servile lapdogs to the worst elements of the power structure on the, the altar of being friendly in Congress and not being persecuted or not being kept off committees? I mean, don't these congressmen and women know if they would do the right thing, people would come to their aid and they would be rock stars uh, in this country uh, instead of creeping along like a bunch of lawyers and, 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 and compromising. But, but, but even a compromise means the other side gives something up. No, no. Compromising under this system means we just do whatever we're told. And I wonder if we go along with this, what more can they do? Well, they, they're going to come with executive orders on guns. And Phyllis, I'm afraid that's going to start a civil war. Well, I, I think he, he will come with executive orders on all sorts of things, and guns may be on their list. They, of course, they hate the Second Amendment. You know, former the former man who was on the U.S. Supreme Court has written a new book, and he wants five new amendments to the Constitution, and one of them really is uh, getting rid of the uh, of the gun amendment. And uh, so uh, the, the 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 people who hate the Constitution are out there, and the American people are just going to have to stand up and stand up for what we believe in.
looking into your crystal ball, you've seen a lot, and I want to shift gears uh, into your book, what we can learn from it about what's happening now. Where do you really see America going? Because globalists are, are, are really a cult, and they get such money and power out of the fact that the UN and these multinationals can manage things, and they can make money off crises, they can make money off booms. Uh, they really aren't based in the free market or reality, but the crony capitalists that fund them uh, want full control, so they're persecuting any type of real free market system, just seeing it as competition, when really they're just exterminating the environment uh, of, of economics that's allowed our civilization to even function. It, it just seems suicidal by the elites what I see them doing. Uh, well, Alex, you said it very well. I can't say it better, but I will point out uh, that when George Bush became president, his big thing was to put us into a North American Union with open borders uh, with Canada and Mexico. And uh, Eagle Farm fought that very hard, and we beat him on that. No, nobody's, now, nobody's really talking about the North American Union anymore. Exactly. So now it's back by stealth, as they said they would do in the Banff Canada meeting from the secret documents Judicial Watch got. So how do we beat a stealth integration that we're witnessing right now? Well, uh, with talk show hosts like you who bring the truth out, uh, the talk show is a great advantage to our cause because it brings the information to the public they can't get in any other way. And so I thank you for that. Please don't. We're in this together. <sighs> well, we, we've, got to, we've got to alert the American people to what's going on. And uh, Eagle Forum has been a leader. Uh, we, we oppose all of this bipartisanship. Uh, I, uh, I tell in my book how uh, Sandy Berger was signed to go give a speech to the Bilderbergers at the Library of Congress and say that bipartisan center was what we really want to work toward. And, uh, and Bush, uh, Condoleezza Rice, on behalf of Bush, announced, uh, yes, that's what they're going to go for. And uh, we don't want these globalists. Uh, we, uh, we want, because America is unique. It's not only exceptional, it's unique. Sure. And, but but uh, it's beyond mean? that. It, it's beyond that. It's not like we're being conquered by something better. We're being conquered by a shyster scam, fractional reserve banking, fraudulent system that makes us bail out their global derivatives and plans to make us even worse debt slaves. Uh, I, I mean, this is, this is just over-the-top bad. And so what do we do then about this treason? And, and back to the question that I interrupted, what does your gut tell you is going to happen to this country? Because I understand we've beaten this stuff before, but how do you stop we're going to beat it again because you and I are going to rise up the grassroots and get them to, to care. And I'm telling them that if you, want, if you want to have an impact, you've got to do it within the Republican Party because your hope of doing it through the Democratic Party or through some third party is going nowhere. You've got to do it with the Republican Party, get the right people nominated and elected to the Republican Convention coming up in 2016 so that we get a good pro-American president, and read my book, A Choice Not an Echo, which tells all the shenanigans the Republicans have been engaging in since 1964. It's right up to date, and it's kind of your handbook for action as we approach the next presidential election. Absolutely. You know, I've always been for third parties at the state level, uh, third party, you know, if, if somebody like Ross Perot could have won, but clearly the entire power structure is lined up to defeat a takeover of the Republican Party by the constitutional movement. And that tells you that's one of our only shots. That's why they're spending all their time and energy bipartisanly to try to shut that down. That's right. And bipartisan is, is no good. We, we don't want to go halfway with the people who want globalist answers. Uh, we want the American way and, and show that it's better and unique. And, and uh, we, that's what... We have to rile up the people to do and get yourself uh, close enough to the party that you get elected to be a delegate to the next Republican convention. This is the way we did it in 1964 when we nominated Barry Goldwater. And, and it can be done again. We did it in 1980 when we nominated Ronald Reagan. Uh, but you've got to give up this idea of going down a third path which leads to nowhere. 
Well said. And there's also some hope here. There is imperial hubris by the rhino Republicans and by the Democrats. Uh, this latest thing where the White House is nominating a soap opera producer, uh, Colleen Bell, with no governing uh, experience, uh, doesn't speak Hungarian, uh, doesn't know anything about them. Uh, but all these Hollywood folks want to be in government, and government wants to be in Hollywood, so it's really a bunch of peacock narcissists that aren't very serious people. Sure, they're buying their way in with donations. Absolutely. So the fact that, that, that we've got such a corrupt group means that if we just fight back against them, uh, they're not even really serious people at this point. When you look at the Democrats, I've got to say, I think they're really soft, they're screwed up, uh, and... I just think that uh, they're ready to fall if we simply stand up to them. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. I'm very optimistic, and I think that the uh, the election the other day, uh, which the American people overwhelmingly said no thanks, when Obama said his agenda was on the ballot, uh, well, then, then okay, we take that, and we rejected it. And uh, uh, I think we can do likewise in the next presidential election, and... Um, Make it, a, make it a great year to save our country. Phyllis, what do you think is going to happen to the Republican leaders that, what can we the people as a grassroots expert who's gone from the grassroots right into the White House with Reagan as one of his top advisors, where are we, where are the best places for the grassroots to lobby and target to get some good behavior out of people like John Boehner? Well, you've got to go after your local Republicans and make make friends with the people who are party officials, county chairmen, precinct committeemen, and and so that they will help you get to be elected a delegate to the next convention. And uh, you 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 need to be a player in the Republican Party. Uh, you it's just not good enough to expound on your independent views somewhere else. Uh, you're not in the in the fight where it is, and the fight is in the Republican Party, and that's where we need to we need to play it, and we need to win, and we have proved that we can win, and so to, to join me in doing it. It's going to be one hell of a fight. That's certainly clear. Uh, well, the founder and head of the Eagle Forum, eagleforum.org, Phyllis Schlafly. Her new book is out of choice, not an echo. You can find it there on her site. Uh, amazing reading. Thank you so much. Have a good day. You too. Uh, folks, I cannot stress enough how dire the straits are.